journey in fact of excellence uh, on the global scale in the in the UK and also on, on the Pakistani TV uh, ARY has been his uh, recent love um, to actually uh, say uh, so, uh, so, so so in the last couple of months but yes we have all buzzed with hopes of seeing uh, Amir Bali back on the screen very soon uh, Amir has been oh, one fascinating announcement in fact Amir has been very kind today uh, to actually uh, come along with his book, which was written a few years back, and just to mention, it was a fifty pounds uh, per copy, and he 25. has done twenty-five. Oh, five. Origi five. Originally, five. originally today free. Yes. Today it's so, free. Yes. So, and he managed to actually donate approximately hundred books to <laughs> all the amazing students sitting over here, and he brought the books. They're available for you guys. And you can sign up How? Easy is it being a Pakistani, a British Pakistani, and making it to the top? And how can we all do that? Um, first of all, uh, thank you to WCOP, uh, Kamaraza Saab. Uh, thank you, uh, RF, and thank you, all of you. Uh, I'll just kind of say a few words about me, because um, just to st uh, start the story uh, rolling, I graduated uh, as a lawyer, trained as a lawyer in Pakistan. Uh, Try to practice law, uh, and I say it, you know, with a very sad heart that it, you know, uh, was coming as a very absurd idea to say that you practice law in a lawless country. Uh, Pakistan at that time was uh, coming to uh, a sort of an end. Now, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I was told that it's working. <laughs> uh, it was still uh, Ziaul Haq's time, you know, when I started practicing law. Uh, but after two years, I decided that uh, it was getting difficult for me, you know, uh, to deal with uh, the kind of problems we had with our judiciary, judicial system, and society. Uh, and then, uh, being a Lahori, uh, I was a storyteller. So I, you know, left my very cushy job. I was working with a very fashionable law firm. Uh, people who I was working with, they are now literally running the government of Pakistan. Uh, they are the Attorney General, they are now judges, but I'm happy that I moved to media. Uh, my friends abandoned me, my cousins abandoned me, because leaving an 80,000 rupees job in 1988 and starting off at 1,200 rupees per month, it was madness. I had to basically park my car and buy a motorcycle. <laughs> and my mother almost abandoned me because she said that you cannot you know, uh, do the night shifts. Pakistan at night is not safe uh, for, for, you know, young men, let alone speak about the women. Uh, I qualified to be a civil servant. I passed the exam just to show my family that I can pass that exam. Uh, but I told my father that, listen, Dad, I'm not, uh, I'm neither civil nor servant, so I won't survive, so let me go. And he was very kind. He has just moved on uh, a couple of months ago. He has gone back to his creator. But he was my hero. And, uh, you know, what I learned from him uh, when he used to say that when Pakistan was made, 
all of us who you know, started off from very, very poor backgrounds. And uh, we set a challenge for ourselves. And when I look back now at my journey in which I have uh, worked largely with the Jung group of newspapers, I became their youngest news editor and youngest deputy editor when I was 28. Um, and then I never, uh, it was not my idea to come to England, I was sent here. And somehow I fell in love with the city and never went back. My, I raised a family here, my wife, my kids. And London is now my primary home with Lahore, my first love. Uh, and during my 28 years of profession, I you know, lived, learned just one thing. If you go on setting challenges for yourself, you survive. Otherwise, it becomes pre-drag. You know, and how did I do that? I presented myself to my editors that, listen, whenever there's a problem, I would go there. And just to kind of test me, they sent me to war zones. In the last 20 years, I've covered four wars in Afghanistan, uh, in Bosnia, in Kosovo, and then lastly in Israel. I was the first Pakistani journalist to land in Israel, you know, uh, run up and down the country, see, because it's a very small country, but it's a very important country in the region. So Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and Ashkelon, Haifa, Nasriya, I saw, you know, how Israel sells its war. You know, I've seen that there was no war. But if you kind of saw the international media, there was war happening in that country. Uh, I've worked with, uh, headed Geo Europe. I worked for BBC for three years. Uh, and then I've recently come back as a sort of an early retirement phase as political editor and a presenter uh, with ARY. Less work and uh, reasonable pay. Uh, and just, you know, one word to all those students who are learning I, I you've he heard a lot but I'm telling you you've already made it you know all those students who are here uh, you are studying at you know top universities in this country uh, that means your parents have supported you that means you have done the hard drag hard bit you know getting up early in the morning six o'clock seven o'clock and then going to school and then college and university so you're already there so you are not kind of here to learn anything from us. <coughs> you just basically see that people who have made it, how they have made it. And I'm telling you, I'm sure that all of you are already leaders. So I'm looking at tomorrow's, you know, very successful, you know, young men and women. Uh, and if you are living in this country, which gives you opportunities, uh, and because the system works, uh, I think you'll go a long way. Uh, you've heard stories. My story is slightly different because my father was a civil servant. So uh, I cannot say that, you know, uh, he has to sleep with 16 men. It is not very interesting, I'm telling you. But uh, <laughs> I don't know what sort of stories they have to tell. Uh, but when I was working, and just uh, uh, to end on a very uh, interesting note, when I, was, uh, when I was moved here, one of uh, my job was to know the Pakistani community. So I traveled up and down this country like a mad dog as well. You know, going to those small towns which used to be cotton towns or wool towns at times. And uh, prosperity has moved on. And those people do not actually have to tell me <coughs> good stories, but I actually had to find good stories to tell back in Pakistan that, listen, Pakistan is doing well. Uh, and this story I will never forget. Uh, I went to this man, a bearded man, uh, you know, gray uh, beard, and just wanted to hear his story. And through his story, he also showed me his uh, photo album. And in one picture, uh, he was a Kashmiri, you know, so the uh, features were brilliant. He was a handsome man. Uh, just like, you know, dressed like teddy boys in the 60s. Um, and black and white pictures are romantic pictures. <laughs> and in that picture, this man is sitting with another friend of his and a white woman, you know, sitting in the, in the middle. And they were sitting really, really tightly. And they had, uh, they were on um, a, a bare table. And right behind, it said fox and hound. So they were actually having a nice time, they appear. And uh, I saw the man and saw him now. And I said, uh, Imdad sir, you were very handsome at that time. I said, <laughs> And uh, I said, this is your friend? Yeah, yeah, Gulam Hussain also came. He is Mirpur. He is a courtly. I said, who is the girl? Uh, she used to work with us in the factory. And I said, you were sitting very tight, you know. <laughs> and I said, uh, no, no, she was a good friend. 
I said, yours or his? I no, 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 just a friend. I said, come on, you know, be honest. You were a young man um, and pictures. You, you look like, you know, Hollywood heroes. And you know what he did? I uh, understand that you will understand uh, a bit of, um, you know, Saraiki or Punjabi or Kashmiri. He actually asked his son, who was bearded at the time, young man. He said, uh, Putra, I don't know that a Pakistan, Chawa, Kenya, Gauri Sahib waste. And the moment he, the boy left the room and said, Gauri Sahib, and I said him, Dad Sahab, you had your time. You know? uh, look at yourself when you were young and look what you have made your son. You know, he's a taxi driver, bearded. He does not actually have a job. When I was coming to England, my father said that, listen, Jinnah and Iqbal and Nehru and Gandhi went to that country to study. So you are going to get a degree from SOAS. Uh, and by the way, I turned down Corpus Christi, Oxford and LSE for SOAS. Uh, I loved this place when I came here because I wanted to study near and Middle East and modern uh, South Asia. And what I'm telling you that you are my son's age. My son uh, is becoming a doctor. He wants to be a singer. And I said, get a degree <laughs> and do whatever you want to do. <laughs> the second son actually wants to be a doctor. Yeah, but I'm telling you, uh, you're not talking to uh, a leader. I'm talking to leaders. I'm telling you, yes. you guys are much more than what we are. And I leave rest to the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Well, this is consistent to your question in the context of all these young students who some of them would probably aspire to become journalists or politicians themselves in the foreseeable future. Looking at the, the current global situation now where two different ideologies have prevailed, we do see a massive clash between the liberals and the conservatives. And please, we do see, we do experience a, a very polarized environment. <coughs> So what is your advice to these students? What sort of ideology would they have to follow? How do they go about this? Because considering this is confusion, now we are at the cusp of a very critical juncture where elections in, in France or Holland for that matter can change the entire dynamics of the Europe and this whole project of European Union may collapse. We, we are seeing all that. So what, what what's your advice to the students? Thank you, Samur. How many of you are from Pakistan or are you all? All right, so, uh, no, no. You you'll go back to Pakistan or you're here? So you're yes, here. Yes, yeah. exactly. that, that's actually wanted to know. Uh, I, I know that all of you are from Pakistani origin. You know, the uh, I think I understand Pakistanis in this country need to be uh, <coughs> British first. You know, uh, it's not being controversial. They were born here. Uh, you know, Pakistan will be their second country. It will be country of their parents. They need to be part of the society, not part of the community. Because as long as you're part of the community, that means you will stay in a corner. And that is when I was interviewing Tony Blair. And when he was uh, after, you know, the 7-7, he was cussing the leaders, the so-called leaders of uh, Muslim community, uh, that, that he felt that he uh, was disappointed by them. And I told him, I said, listen, uh, if I'm a British uh, you know, citizen, if I vote, you are my leader. I said, you might be a bad leader, you might be a good leader. So you took us to war, you were a bad leader. But I'm not passing a judgment here. But when you're actually asking me to consider the MPs from North, MPs from South to be my leader, by that standard, my leader is my MP who I voted for. So I think Pakistanis who are living here, or any Asians for that matter, they need to be first British. And then be proud of their heritage and culture or religion. And as far as, you know, your, because your question is actually very wide, know your world. Uh, I have come across here people who do not actually kind of know London. Uh, Pakistanis who are born here. Uh, I've been to Bradford and uh, been to Bolton and Rochdale and Burnley and never been to London. You know, so when you tell them that, listen, I have come from Pakistan, but I have run through this world. I've seen 97 countries so far. You know, uh, so I do not actually kind of need uh, a geography book. These guys actually had better options. So if, for example, uh, your parents have been picking you up and taking you to Pakistan. You could have told them that, listen, they actually want to know Europe first. You know, it's just around the corner. We're actually going to pick up a cheap ticket. We'll go and actually going to see how the history has moved on. Uh, and tomorrow, you know, from Rome and uh, tomorrow we'll be thinking of China. Uh, learn other people, learn the world and then be inclusive, as Rui said. Uh, I think Pakistanis, whatever your degrees you're doing, I think you need to get involved in media. Uh, why? Because one, you will see the story and the, secondly, you'll be seen. 
you know, I remember the girls and boys who were picked up by CNN and uh, uh, Washington Post and New York Times and then here in this country uh, for Asian background. Why? Because we have uh, advantages of languages, we have advantages of cultures, we know the other part of the world where the stories happen. Uh, but unless we are seen, unless we are heard, nobody would believe us that we have a story to tell. Thank you.